Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson is on trig derivatives and finishing off what we started earlier, which is just knowing the rest of the, the six trig functions. Now we've already done sine and cosine. Those we've been practicing and hopefully you've got down pretty well, and that is that the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So really today's lesson is only learning four more things, just memorizing these four, and then you've got it. You should have it down. You'd think it'd be that easy, right? Well. There's some little things here and there that are going to trip you up, which I will talk about. First, though, I want to point out that when you take the derivative of trig functions, if it starts with a C, notice these, if it starts with a C, the answers are negative. So this bottom row, they will all be negative derivatives. And then the next thing, I have organized them like this because they're in groups. These are similar. These are similar and these are similar. So I've, I've organized like that on purpose so that you can see them in these three little groups. So here's what I mean. The derivative of tangent is, well, actually, let's do this. We could change tangent to sine x. Don't write this down, okay? Just watch for a second. You could change it to sine x over cosine x. Then we could use the quotient rule and do, okay, what is that? Derivative of sine is cosine x times the second one left alone, cosine x minus, and then you leave the first one alone and take the derivative of the second one and just keep going from there. You can do quotient rule and then simplify the whole thing and you would end up getting secant squared x. Okay, that is the derivative of tangent x. But instead of doing it quotient rule every single time, we're just gonna memorize it so we can use the shortcut and go straight to it. All right, so similar to tangent x, we have cotangent x. The difference between tangent and cotangent is the co. All right, so let's see what the answer is. It starts with a C, so it's going to be negative, and then it's negative cosecant squared. So if tangent is secant squared, cotangent will be cosecant squared, except a negative in front because it starts with a C. All right, next up, secant x. This one's a little strange. Secant x, the derivative of that is itself secant x with a tangent x tagged on to the end. So the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. And then that brings us to cosecant x. Starts with a c, so it will be negative. And it is cosecant cotangent. Okay, so secant was secant tangent. Cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. And sometimes it, I don't know why this helps me, but it does. And that is when I see that there's a c and a c, there's two c's here, the answer is going to have a c and a c. Now, maybe for you, you might be thinking, okay, that what are you talking about? But for me, it just makes sense. I remember it for some reason. When I see those two C's, I know the answer is going to have start with a C and then C. Memorize, memorize, memorize. You got to know these. We're going to use these throughout the year. Mostly we use sine and cosine, but these other ones do show up. So here's the most common struggles for this lesson. The students have, and honestly, throughout the whole year when dealing with derivatives and integrals of trig functions. First, it's just the memorizing. Okay, so you got to memorize them. You've already got first and second one down. You've got to get these other four memorized. After that problem comes unit circle values, or if you use uh, special right triangles like 30, 60, 90s or 45, 45, 90s, then uh, that's great too. You can use those, but it's just remembering that stuff. So if I say, what is the value of cosecant of pi over six, can you figure that out? Well, if you can't figure that out, that's actually not a calculus topic. It's a pre-calculus topic. Uh, so, so those are things that if you don't know, this lesson will be uh, more difficult for you. Okay, so you want to have to be able to get those down. And just as a reminder, cosecant is the same thing as one over sine of pi over six. And so could you figure out the reciprocal of sine of pi over six? Next thing is simplifying, manipulating trig functions. So quick example would be if I had sine x times for your answer, one over cosine x, can you see and verify that that just is the same thing as sine x over cosine x, which then equals tangent? Can you simplify trig expressions? Okay, the reason you'd have to be able to do that is because if it's a multiple choice problem, they would not leave the answer looking like that. They would simplify it, and so you'd have to be able to know how to, to manipulate these trig expressions until you get to the final answer of a multiple choice possibility. And then the last thing is trig reciprocals in a calculator. So a lot of calculators, a lot of these, uh, a lot of graphing calculators don't have buttons for these functions. Okay, so what you have to do instead, oops, not tangent, cotangent. So what you would do instead is in the calculator, you have to type one divided by 
sine x. That's how you type in cosecant. And same here, 1 divided by cosine, and then 1 divided by tangent. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's practice this stuff real quick. So the first one, find the derivative of this function, y equals sine x times tangent x. Now, if you recognize that you have two things being multiplied and both of them have the variable x. So that means we have this times this, and it is the product rule where you have two separate functions. So our derivative with respect to x is going to equal the derivative of the first, which is cosine x, times the second one left alone, which is tangent x. Plus, and now we go the next part. We don't take the derivative of the first, so we leave the first one alone, so we just do sine x, and then we times it by the derivative of the second, which the derivative of tangent x, if you remember, is secant squared x. All right, now is there anything that can clean up a little bit here? If you think ahead a step, I know that tangent is sine over cosine. So yeah, I could clean up something. This simplifies a little bit. Sine over cosine will make this cosine cancel. So that cosine cancels with the cosine that's on the bottom here, and you're just left with the sine. Let me, let me write that out so you can see here. Tangent x is sine over cosine x, and then therefore that cosine x and that cosine x cancel, and you're just left with sine x. Plus, and now secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine squared. So yeah, you could probably manipulate this, but it's not going to cause you to have less terms or less expressions, trig expressions. So I would just leave that one alone. And how do you know when you when to stop and how do you know what the right answer is? Well, this was the right answer at the beginning. It's just sometimes they might simplify a little bit more. And if you had to choose a multiple choice answer, that might be the answer. And you just have to know that this is the equivalent to what you had. Okay, so we've got that one. Let's go on to another one. This one, okay. So this one's gonna require a lot of work. I hope I gave you enough space here. So we're gonna take the derivative of this and then plug in pi over six. So let's start off, write small, just to make sure you have enough room. So I'm gonna start off and try and figure out what's f prime of x equal. Uh, all right, quotient rule. You have an x on top and an x on bottom. So it's like your f and your g. So f prime, uh, the derivative of the top is just the number one. And then we leave the second one alone, so secant x minus. Now leave the first one alone. You have x times the derivative of the bottom. So what's the derivative of secant x? It is itself secant x times tangent x. And then that's all over secant squared x. All right, now let's go and plug in a pi over 6. Okay, now this is where it's going to have to come down to, do you know, do you use the unit circle? Do you use the special right triangles? You know, it just depends on how you do this. I'm going to show you how I would do it with unit circle, but if you know your special right triangles, uh, then you can use, do, do it that with that approach. So what, however you know how to evaluate these trig values. All right, so secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So I'm going to think of this as the reciprocal of cosine. So it's 1 over cosine of pi over 6 minus, and then we have the pi over 6, and then we have secant again, so that's 1 over cosine of pi over 6 times tangent. Now, again, maybe you know what the tangent is of pi over 6. Uh, I think of it as sine of pi over 6 over cosine of pi over 6. It's whatever is easiest for you to figure out what all these values are. And then secant squared, again, is 1 over cosine of pi over 6. But it's that whole thing being squared. All right, now let's figure out how to simplify this. So cosine of pi over 6. I'm going to just write over here to save myself some room. Maybe for you, you could do it in the margin on the left side. Cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. So if I take the reciprocal of that, I would get 2 over the square root of 3. So that's what that whole thing is. 2 over square root of 3 minus pi over 6 times 2 over square root of 3, since we already did that, times, and now sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. So then if I divide these, I get 1 over 2 times, I do the reciprocal of that and get 2 over square root of 3, and then that equals 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, so tangent of pi over 6 is equal to 1 over square root of 3. All over, and then I do this one. Cosine of pi over 6, 1 over the reciprocal, we already figured that out. What is that? That's this one. So this is gonna be 2 over square root of 3, 
and then it's squared. Just again, I told you it was gonna be a lot of work. So the calculus part was the first step. You see that? Calculus was easy. We take the derivative, now we're plugging in a pi over six and this is all just trigonometry stuff and then algebra simplification. All right, let's see what we can come up with here. I'll show you how I would simplify this. Two minus uh, pi over six. So then this becomes uh, two over three. Square root of three times square root of three is three. And then I would say I take this numerator and instead of dividing by that, let's multiply by its reciprocal. So this becomes four thirds. So we'll multiply by three fourths. All right, I have to scroll down. I hope I left enough room. All right, so now let's see here. There, holy cow, that was a lot. Square root of three over two minus pi over 12. So you can see a ton of work for this one, but the calculus part was the easy part. After that, it's stuff that you've hopefully learned before this class. Uh, if not, if you haven't learned that, then hopefully this lesson's gonna help you get better. That's why I actually say kids who take calculus, usually after you do calculus and then you go to take the SAT, even though calculus is not on the SAT or the ACT, you do better on them after you've done a whole year of calculus because you practice all this stuff so much. All right, let me get rid of this so we can do our last problem. On this problem, we're gonna use the calculator. So if you have your graphing calculator, grab it, just to make sure you can do this correctly. And let me show you how this works. First, I wanna check my mode. My mode is in radians, good, right there, radians. I had to check that because I'm gonna be typing in something with cosecant. And then I don't have a cosecant button. Be careful. Cosecant, while it is the reciprocal of sine, if you zoom in here and take a look at this, this is sine inverse. That's not the reciprocal of sine. Don't get confused with that. Okay, so don't use the blue, what I have in blue here. So that's sine inverse, which we'll do that later this year. You want the reciprocal, which is one divided by sine. Not the same thing as that. All right, so here's how we do this. Find the derivative of the calculator. We're gonna do math. Let me write this down here just as a reminder for your notes that you type this in. Math eight, if, if you have a TI-84. TI-84, TI-83, it's gonna be math eight. If you have a different type of calculator, you gotta research how to do that. So we're, again, remember we're doing derivative on a calculator. So let's do it. We go math, option number eight is the derivative. I'm gonna do it with respect to X. And then I'm going to type in one divided by sine, because one divided by sine is cosecant. Now, how do I deal with the squared part? The squared, we'll do that in a second. Let's do it with uh, a 4x inside here. So I'll type 4x, close my parentheses. Now, when I do a squared right here, so I'm gonna do the push this x squared button. When I do a squared, this is squaring the entire function of sine. It is not just squaring the 4x. All right, so that's how you do that. And then you go over here and type in, we're doing it at x equals two, enter, and there's my answer. So let me repeat what I just did to make sure you see what I'm talking about here. So that is the answer. You could write that down if you want, 1.20, and you could either say, you could say 1.201 if you wanted to truncate, or if you rounded it, it would be 1.202, whichever you prefer. So if I had said one divided by sine, and I wanted to square the four x squared, it would be like this. I would do open, it would have the open parentheses, and then I would do open parentheses four x, close the parentheses, square it, and then close the parentheses. This outside parenthesis here, which is what I did on this one, if you square that, it squares the entire thing, and that's how you get a cosecant squared. Okay, so that's everything for the lesson. We've covered everything you need, so rock that mastery check, and this is it for unit two, so I'll see you back in unit three. Good luck on that test.